Hello, everyone. Thank you all for um, being here today. My name, for those of you who don't know me, is Matthew Tanico. I'm the Assistant Dean for Graduate Student Life in the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Um, and I'm excited to welcome you all to this Interdisciplinary Humanities Symposium. Uh, I want to begin by acknowledging that the land upon which we are located is occupied territory. It is the traditional land and ancestral home to Native American, Indigenous, and First Nations peoples, including Mohegan, Mashantucket Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill Pegasset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac and other Algonquin speaking peoples. We take a moment to recognize and honor the current indigenous population, knowing that this is our present as much as it is our past. So there are a number of reasons why graduate students choose to come to Yale. And among the top are our distinguished faculty, our collaborative community, and the many resources that allow students to carry out their scholarship. This symposium is intended to highlight the impressive collection of resources dedicated to the humanities on campus, not just within the traditional departments and programs, but reaching out across and beyond the division. It is a showcase, particularly for first and second year students who have not had as much of an opportunity to spend time on campus in our museums, collections, libraries, research centers, and institutes, and who have not had the chance to meet the many people who steward these resources and allow us to navigate them as students, teachers, and scholars. But today's event is also a statement to show how research in the humanities has been reactivated after the past 18 months delayed our ability to be in archives and facilities and face-to-face -face with our collaborators. I hope that this event will be a celebration of the humanities at Yale and that it will inspire many individuals to explore new directions in their academic work. We'll begin momentarily with our first research presentation, but I want to remind everyone that the info fair that will be taking place throughout the duration of today's event is just around the corner in room 134. And representatives from units across Yale's campus, including West Campus, are there to answer questions about how you can take advantage of all the opportunities for scholarly inquiry that our university has to offer. I want to um, thank Taryn and Zabe, our McDougal Fellows, for all their help um, and Liz's help with putting together today's um, symposium. And with that, uh, I'll turn to our first presenter. Min Vu is a PhD student in American Studies and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Min's research centers on relational Afro-Asian formations of race, cultural productions, and histories of solidarities. In particular, Min examines water as an analytic connecting histories of transatlantic slavery and transpacific imperialism. Min also serves as a fellow for the Yale Prison Education Initiative, for which they'll be talking about today. Welcome, Min. Cool. Um, OK, so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Min, and I am a second year. Um, yeah, so today I'm just going to share with you um, some information about a really special program here at the university called the Yale Prison Education Initiative. Um, but before I begin, I just wanted to share some quick acknowledgments and disclaimers to just, you know, initiate the presentation with a tone of generosity and collaboration. Um, so first, thank you so much to Dr. Matthew Tanico uh, for organizing the symposium and leading us in shaping its uh, intellectual, logistical, and programmatic contours. Um, next, I wanted to index my Deep gratitude for the YPEI community, uh, first to the leadership team composed of James Jetter, uh, who's the founder of the uh, Dwight Hall Civic Allyship, Allyship Initiative, uh, second to Vanessa Estime, who is the new assistant director of YPEI, uh, and last but not least, Dr. Zelda Rowland, um, who's the founding director of YPEI, as well as alum of Yale College and Yale GSAS. Uh, last but not least, and most importantly, um, I am endlessly grateful to the students of the Yale Prison Education Initiative, who I've been able to be in deep conversation and community with since my senior year here uh, as an undergrad, uh, and now uh, in the graduate school. Um, and through shared practice of study of struggle, the students uh, have completely up upended how I come to move through and underneath higher education, the classroom, and more broadly, the university. Um, and yeah, the YPI students and leadership team all could speak about YPI. <clears throat> in higher education and prison, 
way more robustly than than I could. So by no means am I giving a uh, Am I going to capture everything uh, in these brief 25 minutes? But I just wanted to share a bit about my own involvement so as to give interested graduate students a brief glimpse into the program. Um, let's see. And yes, so related to this idea of experience and expertise, this presentation is a really casual one. I sort of give a broad bird's eye view of YPEI um, that's marked by the dark blue slides, which were shared with me through Zelda. And then as I go into the relevant programs I was involved with, I'll dip into my own reflections, which are marked by the slides with the white backdrop. Uh, and through this weaving, I hope to give like a sort of informational as well as personal account of higher ed in prison and its political, pedagogical, and programmatic possibilities. Um, for some brief context, the Yale Prison Education Initiative is a program founded by Zelda run through Dwight Hall at Yale, which is the Center for Public Service and Social Justice located at Old Campus. Uh, YPEI's main practices include offering Yale and University of New Haven courses in prison, connecting incarcerated students with academic and educational resources, or, um, working with re re released students and assisting in re-entry through collaborations with local community organizations, and most broadly advocating for higher education in prison, both within Yale and also beyond. Uh, the program started offering classes in the summer of 2018 after four years of development, uh, funding, and building partnerships between the university and the Depart uh, Conne Connecticut Department of Corrections. Uh, these classes included studies in creative writing, American literature, drawing, and painting, and provided students with transferable Yale College credit. In terms of location, as of now, YPEI works with students at the McDougal Walker Correctional Institution which is a high uh, and max security level facility for adult men. Uh, MWCI is around a 50 minute drive from New Haven and even this, um, yeah. And then in terms of admissions and class composition, the first sets of classes had over 600 applications from adult men between the ages of 23 and 49. And in the constructing and functioning of the YPEI classroom, there's no discriminatory consideration of any applicant's length of sentence or type of conviction. Uh, students are engaged as interlocutors and companions with a broad variety of academic and extracurricular interests, just like non-incarcerated students here at Yale. Um, and over the past three years, um, the program has grown tremendously through the collective work of the YPEI leadership team, YPEI students, faculty members, grad students, and undergrad volunteers. Um, so as you can see, since 2018, there have been over 194 unique enrollments for 43 uh, incarcerated students and over 70 faculty members and grad students, as well as over 100 undergraduate volunteers um, from all over the university um, who have been involved in extending on-campus research and resources from Yale to McDougal Walker. Uh, and just briefly, as these numbers show, um, YPEI has also been really generative in terms of blurring the rigid distinctions between faculty, graduate students, and undergrads um, because the initiative has been a really rigorous space where all of these different realms of the university work, uh, they work collectively in bringing coursework and resources to students. Um, on, the second, oh, on the second bullet point, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I first started uh, my involvement with YPEI as an undergrad here, and one of my most memorable experiences during this interim was getting to work with Professors Daniel Hosang, Leah Miracor, Lisa Lowe, and Roderick Ferguson through their uh, co-taught intro to ERNM class. Um, and from helping them build their syllabus to running supplementary discussion sections and even doing those 50-minute drives to McDougal Walker with the faculty, uh, I would argue that YPEI you know, makes an intervention internally within Yale as well because it organically and deliberately provokes collaborations across disciplines, departments, and job titles. Um, and this slide just further elaborates upon the earlier points that I sort of shared about YPEI student admissions. Um, it's important to underscore that YPEI students are Yale students taking Yale classes, um, taking existing courses offered to undergraduates here um, with the same course rigor through um, to the best of our ability, similar assignments, assessment standards, workload, and contact hours with peers, teaching fellows and faculty, whether through office hours, studio time for art classes, and additional academic programming, such as workshops and lectures um, from visiting professors and practitioners. Um, 
And just continuing this chronology of YPEI, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic presented a plethora of problems and interruptions to student learning. Um, on March 12, 2020, the Connecticut Department of Corrections uh, suspended all outside programming and visitations, including from students, uh, friends, and family members. Um, but nonetheless, YPEI worked um, both experimentally and openly to maintain our commitment to the students by sending and receiving assignments by snail mail. And through these letters, we were able to foster students' independent studies and workshops via correspondence with Yale faculty and students. Uh, some of these epistolary programs included a discussion section on race, religion, and American empire uh, by then PhD candidate Victoria Baina, um, a reading group on black Marxism by Professor Ferguson, and a creative writing workshop organized by me and two other student fellows. Uh, and through these remote engagements, the YPEI students were able to take all of the materials as starting points to facilitate their own in-person seminars and discussion groups during the quarantine. Uh, in terms of the creative writing workshop, which was I was involved with as a first year here at, in the PhD program, um, I worked with two undergrad fellows, uh, Ananya and Gabby, who really spearheaded the program. Uh, and we invited a broad range of writers, artists, and academics across the country to curate their own packets of creative writing reflections, readings, and response questions to send to the students. Uh, some of these writers were on the last slide, but they included uh, Franny Choi, Chen Chen, Alexander Chi, Brian Hopper, Tavia Nyango, and Sunny Shang. Um, and after the students received the packets, they responded to some of the suggested prompts and sent back pieces of poetry, nonfiction, fiction, memoir, and other creative writing texts um, to be workshopped by uh, student editors here at Yale. Uh, and even some of the pieces ended up being published on some on-campus uh, on -campus publications that I'll show later. Um, I won't bog you down with too many more of these details about the contents or logistics, but you can visit the website at the top to learn more. Um, but uh, yeah, and now with classes in person, there are versions of the workshop that are running um, in the fall as well. So then sort of moving away from information and instead towards reflection, I just wanted to share these two quotes um, from two scholars who have thought about the necessity of art and of letter writing as genres of intimacy that facilitate alternative conceptions of space, of shared study, and of community formation. Uh, in the top left, Nicole Fleetwood, in her latest book, Marking Time, writes, quote, uh, art, and by art she means of all mediums, uh, creates relational possibilities that disrupt the mandate of the prison. Such artistic practices radically challenge the impenetrability of prison. Uh, in the bottom right, Orsan Mee Burton writes um, that letter writing within and beyond prisons functions as a form of community building, grassroots intelligence gathering, collective theorization, and mutual aid. Um, so resonant in these two quotes that I just wanted to share um, is this idea of slipperiness um, and how art and letter writing are collective practices that trouble the architectures of borders, walls, and locks. Uh, and throughout the letter exchanges during the pandemic within YPEI, you know, there's this sort of, there was like this sort of anxiety about, um, but like still a, like a reassurance about um, the uncertainties that snail mail presents. Uh, so one of the barriers that we faced when adapting to the pandemic was that sending and receiving physical letters took up to two weeks, um, given travel time, oversight, and processing within the prison. Um, but, and this delay in timing basically meant that there was a sort of disjuncture between sender and receiver, because um, in New Haven, we'd have to work proactively well in advance, whereas the students in Suffield uh, had to work more retroactively given the delays. And, you know, and when letters are sent, there's this kind of like ambiguous um, sense of like, you know, did it get lost in the mail? Uh, will, the will the receiver reply? When will I write back? Um, and despite these logistical and emotional anxieties, which were compounded by the pandemic and its mandate for like separation and quarantining, uh, the YPEI community was still able to be in, in an intimate network of letter exchanges for around a year. Um, and lastly, in these two quote, quotes, um, Fleetwood and Burton, you know, are speaking specifically about art and letter writing in the context of the prison. But I would even extend their analysis to the university too, you know, as these letters were crucial modes of community, even for those here in New Haven um, and our shift to um, purely Zoom. And then, so moving on to the quite recent, uh, in April 2021, YPI received a three-year grant from the Andrew Mellon Foundation. And this $1.5 million grant has been really pivotal in allowing YPI students, both current and prospective, 
to earn a two-year associate's degrees from the University of New Haven by taking courses taught by both Yale and UNH faculty uh, and grad students. So again, we see this sort of like increasing slipperiness between the university and the prison um, as faculty and graduate students across colleges begin collaborating and as incarcerated students begin acquiring degrees that were, and I would argue, are still reserved um, for the unincarcerated populations. And since this Mellon grant, uh, YPI has been able to offer these in-person courses uh, this past summer and this ongoing fall through partnerships with Yale and the University of New Haven. So in addition to the creative writing workshop, uh, this first course on the left, uh, English 120, um, was my first was my next main engagement with YPEI. Um, but this time it was in a more official role as a teaching fellow funded through YPEI's partnership with Yale Summer Session. Um, and this transition from uh, undergraduate student volunteer to graduate student teacher has been really formative for me uh, in terms of reshaping my commitments and also uncommitments to pedagogy and higher education as they are structured the way they are now. Um, so this quote here, uh, a real togetherness was developing, is from Angela Davis's autobiography where she reflects on the necessity of a pedagogy um, while recounting her time being incarcerated in the New York Women's House of Detention, but still continuing her professorial work, but through the lens of a jailhouse pedagogy. Um, and the reason why I invoke this quote, um, this idea of togetherness as an active and ongoing verb, <clears throat> is because the English 120 creative writing course, which is one of the first classes the new cohort of YPI students took, and one of the intro classes that a lot of Yale uh, first years take, was not just a standard seminar discussion, but also had peer review workshops at least once a week. Um, and as someone who took creative writing workshops here as an undergrad, I noticed that the sort of practice of community um, took on extremely different shapes between the classrooms in, at Suffield versus in New Haven. Um, so for the YPI students, you know, togetherness manifests as a form of like shared preca precarity and collective study and struggle. Um, and workshops were at spaces of honest and kind, but also rigorous and difficult conversations. You know, whereas classes at Yale and New Haven, I think sometimes have tinges of professionalization, socialization, and therefore some shieldedness that I think can get in the way um, of learning together in a collective and vulnerable fashion. Um, and just in sharing this anecdote, um, I just want to index that teaching in YPEI has allowed me to garner not just a wonderful community of friends and interlocutors, but also a set of, um, they're not tools, but like more so like principles, like guiding principles to bring into the classes here at Yale buildings as I continue to teach and enter my third and fourth years. Um, so I just wanted to sh give three quotes that we can put in conversation with each other, um, all from different perspectives. So this quote here is, um, a YPEI student testimony. I'll just read bits of it. Um, I've, I've taken strides educationally that were once unfathomable, let alone unreachable, unreachable, not only because of accessibility, but because of the mental, emotional, social, and intellectual standstill. My brain, uh, my brain and heart have been stored in uh, that YPEI has unlocked. The deans, professors, students, former students, and volunteers that I've been blessed to come into contact with have treated me with an equality that has been foreign to me since my departure from the free world. Um, this is a reflection from a graduate student instructor. Um, they say, uh, I have grown increasingly convinced that this initiative embodies the very best of what Yale is, is and inspires to be, uh, a center of innovative teaching and research that seeks to educate and learn from the brightest, most creative students, wherever they may be. And then this third um, slide is a reflection from a YPEI faculty member, Rod Ferguson. And he writes that um, uh, one of the standout st and singular teaching experiences for him has been the opportunity to teach in the Yale Prison Education Initiative. Um, as students, YPEI students have uh, exacting standards as readers and interlocutors. They're not just going to accept anything that you say because you're the authority or because the text was written by so-and-so. They're also incredibly generous. Um, so in giving you these three faces of YPEI, I think they all prompt a sort of revisitation and also a reconsideration of the purpose of higher education and our own roles within it as members of the university. Um, so here's Yale College's mission statement, and I just underlined some points, some phrases that I think could be further uh, um, discussed. Um, 
And yeah, I think the Yale College mission statement in context of Yale, um, the Yale Prison Education Initiative, but also higher ed uh, in prison programs beyond, um, prompt us to think about you know who is excluded, but also included from this mission statement and what sort of possibilities lie in the future. Um, and yes, these are just some slides of the YPI students' collaborations with on-campus publications um, during the creative writing workshop. On the left is um, the spring 2020 issue of the Yale Lit Mag, where we had some students publish their poetry alongside um, Yale students here in New Haven. Uh, in the middle is a YDN article. It was a special issue where they invited YPI students to um, send some pieces related to their experiences in YPEI. And on the right is this awesome multimedia project that one of our students ha uh, did with the Beinecke uh, Rare Book and Manuscript Library. And they published a sort of uh, mini exhibit with writing and drawings. Um, yeah, so in terms of opportunities and ways to get involved, um, you can learn more about it at the, the fair next door, but uh, some partnerships for student support. Um, together, we work with the Porvu Center for Teaching and Learning to bring in academic strategies mentors and writing partners um, to the students. We also work with the Yale University Library, um, sort of bring archival and textbook resources to students as they do their research papers and final projects. Um, there's a um, YUL and YPEI student coordinator position that will be opening next spring, and it's a paid student position. Um, and it's ideally for a grad student interested in library services and programming. And yes, TFs and accessibility resources as well. And here are some, what are they called? QR codes <laughs> that you can scan if you're interested uh, in volunteering. But yeah, thank you so much and happy to answer any questions. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'd be interested, so I love the way you talk about time throughout the pandemic and the letter writing. I think the academic calendar is such an interesting take on time. Has that impacted at all, or have you thought at all about how you, the university might function differently if we thought about time differently? with the possibilities that you've been able to do now thinking about time to Yeah, that's a really helpful question. And I, yeah, I think the way time operates for a classroom at McDougal Walker versus time at a classroom here in a Yale building um, is really different. I think time at McDougal is really quick and it's, um, there are a lot more logistical issues that come with it. So for example, if a student wants to write a research paper that combines archival sources from a Yale library or secondary resources from a Yale library. That requires them to uh, submit a research request through our research request network that then has to shuttle through a, uh, a Yale undergraduate who then looks up some of the relevant literature for the student to then send back in. And if you think about the, the time to go back uh, between the prison and here is 50 minutes. So in that, in that case, like you can immediately see, the, immediately see the discrepancy and asymmetry that takes place in terms of research for a YPEI undergrad. Whereas like, you know, here at Yale, undergrads, grad students, faculty, you know, you, just, you log into Orbit and you can get something immediately through your laptop and through the internet and, and through your net ID. So I think there are a lot of sort of those logistical um, things that like I, a lot of us here can take for granted when doing our research that YPI students have to overcome and think about um, as they build their research and begin writing. Um, so yeah. Could you say the question? Sorry, the lawnmower is really loud. Um, so, can you speak to the level of initiative and what um, motivates these events to launch and do this because their things are so structured? 
so in a normal situation that I was wondering, you know, how you, how you, you know, what your experience is with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Yes, uh, the question was, how do the incarcerated YPI students um, take sort of the initiative to attend classes within a sort of like extremely structured day um, as the prison sort of organizes um, time and movement for the students? Um, yeah, I think the, the reason why YPI isn't just about classes, for example. It's not just like, you know, you do a class and you leave, but it's, it's all about um, different types of other programming as well. Like we bring um, in visitors and lecturers that, who speak about their work. We have study open study halls for students to come together um, and talk about uh, their own research. And we also run workshops like the Creative Writing Workshop. We bring in academic strategies, mentors, and writing partners. And that's because we want to sort of create a comprehensive sort of, as comprehensive as we can of an undergraduate experience for them. And I think for them, I mean, uh, YPI is just a great um, way to get around the sort of hyper organization of the prison and think very openly and collectively about various political and intellectual um, things they've been thinking about. Um, yeah, and like the students come from all sort of regions of the prison as well. So there's that sort of like larger spatial um, divisions that we, we also have to think about as well. Yeah. Hi, thank you for this talk. Yeah. Has there been any discussion about uh, extending the program to incarcerated women as well? Yeah, um, there, there definitely is. I think Zelda <laughs> could speak more to it. Um, and Zelda's in the audience right there. She's the director of the program. but. Thank you, everyone.